What's up guys, No here from the DigiBros, and today's the day we finally get the release of Netflix live action, uh, The One Piece, you know, Etra Otis Magnum Opus, the beloved series, my personal favorite, as you guys know me, you know, I make content about the One Piece card game, been a big fan of One Piece forever, like a lot of the people out there. Um, it's personal favorite series. Luffy's one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. And as you know, we got more and more information revealed about you know this live action series. You know, you know, I, I remain optimistic as you know we revealed more and more. Start getting trailers. We started to see more and more you know content about this live action series. So um, I did watch the first episode titled "Romance Dawn." Um, and that's the only episode I've seen thus far. I do plan on watching the rest of it. But I just wanted to have this video talking about my initial thoughts of the live action. Uh, my initial thoughts on the first episode. Once again, titled Romance Dawn. Very important name for One Piece as a whole. Um, you know, one, one, well, Etra Oda loves, loves that, 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 that title, that, that saying that phrase, Romance Dawn. It was the very first chapter of One Piece, it was also the uh, one shot uh, named for One Piece. It was titled Romance Dawn that he used to pitch One Piece. Um, so I initially started to script out um, the things that I wanted to say. Um, I, I don't know, it started to feel a bit more article y, a bit more too in depth for viewy. -y. Um, so I just went and then I took a couple of the things I typed up and I bullet pointed some things out and I just wanted to go over uh, some things I liked, some things I didn't care for as much. Uh, once again, my, my just my initial thoughts on the very first episode titled Romance Dawn. Um, overall, as a live action anime, not saying One Piece specifically, but as a live action anime, I felt like the very first episode was fairly decent, you know, uh, the only, like, you know, uh, one, one piece sticks out from others, you know, with the usage of the devil fruit abilities, and the only devil fruit ability that we do see in the very first episode is going to be, uh, Luffy's, uh, gum gum fruit, you know, and so, like, the things we see him do with that, you know, it's nothing too crazy, we do see gum gum pistol, we do see, you know, him, like, stretching his body, you know, reaching up, grabbing things, or pulling uh, characters, you know, reaching out, grabbing characters, pulling them toward him, stuff like that, you know, just generic, Luffy, stretching, body made of rubber, stuff like that, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, we do see him, you know, get hit in the head by Alvita's club, you know, his head, you know, goes in a bit, and then he's able to pop it back out. We do see him get shot one time, and how the... Uh, Bullet goes, you know, stretches his body out and then he flings it back. Uh, what uh, I believe that might be the only real things we do see him, you know, like I said, like move his body out of the way to get from being attacked. Uh, we do see that a couple times once against Alvita, you know, he like you know, stretches his body backwards, you know, so that way he doesn't get hit by her club. And then later at the Marine base, uh, whenever he's you know fighting against Axham Morgan and against some of the uh, Marines, we do see him, you know, once again, you know, stretch his body to avoid from getting hit. Um, and it, it looks fine. Like, I know the first initial trailer, I don't want to say first trailer, but the first trailer that we see uh, him do the gum gum uh, pistol in, a lot of people on the internet were like, oh, you know, this looks however. Some people, you know, are like, oh, it looks fine. You're like, oh, it looks good. Some people are like, oh, this looks dumb. You know, within the context of the show, like, it looked fine. Like, it was... I, I had no problems with the way it looked. I had no problems with a, any of Luffy's uh, rubber abilities looked. But then, oh, he does also, like, stretch his uh, cheek out whenever he's talking to Kobe uh, about how he's a rubber man. Um, you know, he grabs onto his lip, pulls it, you know, stretches it, and then let's go in and snaps back. That looks fine as well. So no problems on that. Um, moving on to some other things. Like I said, you know, that was the only devil fruit that was within the episode. There, so Zoro and his uh, 
sword play. It it looked really good. I had no problems with like really any of the action, any of the action choreography. It all looked good. It all looked uh, real. Uh, nothing too cheesy. I, I didn't really see any like characters standing in the background just you know bobbing back and forth with the sword, pretending to hit things. Um, the actor for Zoro, you know, he seemed to be doing uh, very well with the swords. Um, I don't think there were anything like as far as like action wise anything that just really stuck out of like oh that looked bad, that didn't look good, stuff like that. Like the action stuff looked fine. Uh, let's get into the sword play. Uh, speaking of Zoro and the sword play, um, within about the first like 20 minutes of the episode, you do see Zoro cut someone in half, uh, which I had seen some stuff this morning on the internet, people talking about that, how, you know, probably isn't the most appropriate for like younger children, because we do see some graphic violence, because you, you do see him, he, he cuts this man, this this number seven of Broke Works in half, and uh, that's right, Broke Works in the very first episode. I'll talk more about that um, a little bit later on. Um, but my my first initial thoughts, like I said, the, the action, the CG on uh, Luffy's rubber abilities looked fine. The sword play with Zoro and swords looked fine. Really, I want to say is the pacing of the very first episode that really kind of stuck out to me. I don't want to say bothered me, um, but I do want to say stuck out. It's because they covered a lot of content within uh, an hour uh, of the live action episode. They do cover uh, the first seven chapters of the manga within the first episode. And that's from the very beginning introduction of Romance Dawn all the way up until the end of the Marine Base. And there are some things in there, like, in the very first chapter, we do see all of Luffy's backstory uh, with Shanks, him cutting his face, getting the gum gum fruit. You know, we do see a bunch of that within the very first episode. And it's, you know, cut in the flashbacks, you know, we'll get it, like, sprinkled throughout. I don't believe... No, nope, yep. I, we, we do not see all of Luffy's uh, backstory within that first episode. We see the introduction of the Mountain Bandits, uh, Magura, um, but we don't see, you know, him kidnapping Luffy, going out to sea, Shanks rescuing him from the King of the Coast, losing his arm, using his hockey to scare away uh, the Sea King. We don't see none of that within the first episode, uh, but that is included within the very first chapter, uh, Romance Dawn of uh, One Piece. And, like I said, they, they tried to cover a lot within this very first episode. Uh, a bunch of character introductions, you know, that's to be understood. You know, um, Luffy, of course, at the very beginning, you know, he's the first character we're introduced to after the intro. Um, he's sailing on his little boat. It's sinking. Uh, there's one of the uh, delivery newspaper birds that are on his boat and he's trying to convince him to join his crew and then he just flies away. Uh, we see him get in the barrel that later is picked up by Alvita's ship and brought on board, you know, and he, you know, busts out. Kobe's there, you know, and then the whole Alvita on her ship, you know, that whole acts out. Basically as normal as it did in the manga and the anime. Um, there are some character introductions, uh, like Nami, hers is different, like when we see her for the very first time. But then the manga and anime, we do see she is on the ship that is being attacked by Alvita. Uh, that is not shown within the first episode. We might see that in a flashback in you know later episode. But in the very first episode, we do see her. She's on a separate little, you know, little boat, you know, just drifting away in the ocean. And we see Buggy's pirate come up and she, you know, steals their boat and leave them stranded in this little boat. We do see that. That is something that does happen in the original source material alongside the anime. Um, but as far as her sh being shown on the ship that's being attacked by Alvita, we don't see her there. And so, speaking of Nami, I know this this is just uh, I'm like I'm rambling, but I, it's as I'm like bringing up one point, you know, I'm thinking about another. Um, she is a lot more involved within this first episode than I thought she would have been. Um, 
and that, that's more so once again I'll, I'll get into later uh, like I said I'm just you know initial thoughts before I get into like more like critique stuff um, so once again we see uh, Nami being involved a little more more than I thought she should have been within this first episode um, no no complaints about you know having more Nami you know Nami's a beloved character everybody loves Nami um Accent Morgan, um, how Meppo, Kobe, you know, I'm just throwing out some, like, big names that we, like, really see within this first episode, uh, Zoro, like I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of characters we do see out of place, um, for example, we do see, uh, Kabaji from Buggy's crew, he is at the, uh, Marine base, we do see him, I... You know, if you weren't paying attention, then you might not have, you know, acknowledge that him. it was him. You know, uh, we do see him sitting at the bar, and, like, some stuff goes down, and then, you know, he gets up and leaves. And then, at toward the end of the episode, we do see uh, Kabaji meeting up with Buggy and talking to Buggy. So, um, yeah, like I said, for, for a live action anime, I feel like this first episode um, was decent. Uh, if you are a big fan of the source material, uh, both the anime and the manga, you will see some, I don't want to say jarring differences, but you will you will be able to pick out, you know, some stuff. So if you're not, you know, like, let's say you have some family that might be interested in watching the live-action One Piece because, you know, it's a fun pirate adventure. I feel like it's, you know, nothing wrong with them being able to hop in, watch this. Without them knowing, you know, the source material, they won't see, you know, what's the difference is because they will know the difference. So that's one thing I do want to start to acknowledge now. Um, some of the things that really like, sh you know, stuck out. Um, the biggest one for me has to be Zoro at the Marine Base, and. I watched I watched the first episode with my wife, you know, after we finished watching that it was like the the first thing that we both acknowledge, you know, how drastically different Zoro at the Marine base in the live action is versus the anime and the manga. because um, we know we are introduced to Zoro, he's being strung up in the yard, uh, because he defended the little girl in the bar from Helmeppo and Helmeppo struck a deal with Zoro telling him that if he you know would last however long he would uh, forgive you know the little girl and her mom at the bar because uh, I believe she like spilled a drink on him and Zoro stood up for her and he's like hey my daddy's ex Sam Morgan you know he can kill you he just killed his, this girl his family and so he you know it's very noble of him. He, you know, he, he, you know, said, I don't want you to hurt this family. I want you to hurt this little girl. I'm going to willingly, I, because of how Meppo was the one who did him, you know. He was the one who, who proposed this idea to Zoro. He's like, I'm stringing you up. And we also see that the little girl would sneak food into the, the, the yard to bring to Zoro in the Marine base. Um. Because he, that was part of the condition where he couldn't, you know, eat or drink anything for however many days he was going to be strung up in the yard. But she would sneak food into him, you know. And whenever she would do that, he would, you know, try to turn her away. Be like, hey, get out here. You're going to get caught. And she does eventually get caught by uh, Hameppo. She drops the, the rice cake she makes and, you know, runs away. And, you know, he stomps on the rice cakes, you know, spits on Zoro. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And we just don't have that exact interaction within the live action. We do see Zoro at a bar. At the same time, Luffy's at the bar with Kobe. Uh, Nami is also there in the background, doing her own thing. Um, we do see Zoro, like I said, just standing at the bar. Uh, he comes in with this bounty he had um, collected. And, you know, is asking for a drink. And the little girl just walks up to him, you know, with some rice balls. It's like, hey, you know, you look hungry. Do you want these? And then she bumps into Helmeppo. And then that's whenever he, like, stomps on him. And then Zora reaches down and, like, picks up. He's like, oh, you stepped on my food. And 
gets into like a little altercation, you know, with the Marines in the bar, you know, fights them off. And then eventually he makes his way to the Marine base on his own accord, you know, uh, how Mappo and other Marines are also there. But he's trying to turn in this bounty that he had collected earlier in the uh, episode of a broke Broke's work member uh, number seven. He's trying to collect his bounty, and that's when Axan Morgan comes up to him. He's like, hey, I think you would make a great Marine. What do you say? You want to join the Marines? And Zora's like, no, I'm not interested in joining the Marines. You know, I like doing my own thing. And Axan Morgan strings him up in the yard. And that, that's just like the two... That, that's like the big thing within like the first episode. Is, you know, it's... Zoro's no longer doing it out of no because he's not trying to protect this little girl and her mother uh, from the tyranny of Hamepo. Because in the original series, Hamepo, you know, he was a bully. He would go around, you know, he would take stuff. You know, he's like, my dad's axe hand Morgan, you know, and if you don't do what I say, I'm going to have him come down here and kill you. You know, he was very... It's not that how Meppo himself was threatening, but it's like a lot of the characters uh, at the Marine base were threatened by axe hand Morgan. And so they would just kind of give in and they would uh, give in to how Meppo, because he was very spoiled, he just, you know, he's like, oh, my daddy's powerful. I can do whatever I want because I have him to back me up. And that just, once again, wasn't the case with Zoro. He, you know, went to the Marine base to turn in this bounty. And that's when Axan Morgan was like, hey, if you don't join the Marines, I'm going to string you up. And I just, that, that part, you know, and we don't get the scene with the girl sneaking the food in and Luffy feeding Zoro the stepped on food that was on the ground, you know. We do see Luffy untie Zoro uh, from being strung up, and that that was that was another thing where Luffy was like asking him, he's like, "Hey, what is it that you want to be when you grow up?" You know, and he's like, "Oh, I want to be the world's greatest swordsman." Where in the the original source material, Luffy didn't even ask him that. Uh, Zoro claims that he wasn't going to die there because he had things that he wanted to be, that he was going to become the world's greatest swordsman. It was his own, you know, ambitions that he, you know, stated this. It wasn't, you know, being asked this by Luffy. He's like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up, kid? You know, you know, Zoro had his own ambitions, you know, where in this live action he felt like, he's like, oh, it's dumb. I don't want to tell you, you know, like, even if I tell you, I'm not going to join your crew, which, you know, Zoro did say that. He's like, you know, I'm not going to join your crew. But Luffy unties him there where, you know, before, Luffy's like, all right, I'm going to recover your sword uh, and I'm bring it back to you. And But here he just unties him and Zoro goes off looking for his own swords, which we do come to. It's it probably the funniest part within the uh, first episode. Uh, we do see Helmeppo. Uh, naked standing in front of a mirror with Zoro's Wadoichi emoji and he's just doing little 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 he's like posing with it and Zoro you know kicks in the door and then Hamapo turns around he's like oh, you're not gonna kill me are you and Zoro's like nah I'm gonna do something much worse than you and at the because that, that's something else me and my wife were, were talking about afterward like I genuinely thought Zoro was gonna cut off his penis I don't know why I, he used to stand there naked uh, later, we see that he, you know, like, cut his hair. You know, it looked funny. Um, I I just, for some reason, thought Zoro was going to cut off Helmepo's penis at that moment. I don't know. Because he's like, I'm going to do something much worse than you than killing you. And he just cuts his hair a little bit. I don't know. It's a little silly. Uh, but it, it was genuinely funny just seeing, like, Helmepo just... Why, why was he naked? Why was he... <laughs> You know, dancing around with the 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 Wadoichi emoji, um, it, it was it was it was a pretty fun scene. Uh, but the whole time this is going on, Nami is also there at the Marine base, and she is looking for a map to the Grand Line. Which, before she steals a map to the Grand Line from Buggy. and so we get the interaction of her. You know, uh, uh, Orange Town with Buggy, 
and how she's like, oh, Buggy, you're so incredible. I'm enjoying your crew. I'm going to do all this stuff. But here at the end of the first episode, you know, they steal the safe out of Axe Morgan's office. And within the safe is, you know, the uh, map to the Grand Line. And we see Zoro and Nami and Luffy all sailing off together. And uh, I know they the, then there's this like big fight you know there at the, the end of the episode with Axan Morgan and Luffy and Nami and Zoro they're all fighting you know the Marines and Axan Morgan and they're like struggling to fight them which is it's funny because I feel like they, they made Axan Morgan stronger within the live action than he was in the original source material because he really wasn't that big of a threat like they, they beat him fairly fairly quickly and that just uh, like I said, it felt like they were struggling a bit. Zoro and Luffy, you know, were trying to like make a plan on how to defeat them. Uh, and I was just like, <laughs> that wasn't the case in you know the original. Uh, once again, this is this is an adaptation. It's not a one for one recreation, and I acknowledge that. But just knowing the source material and like coming to this, it's you know these things like I said before, they do they do stick out. The whole Zoro being strung up thing. Uh, and the next big one is whenever Zoro and uh, Luffy and Nami are getting ready to leave. You know, they just immediately run back to the boat that Nami had stole uh, from the buggy pirates. And they're just hopping on the boat. And Luffy's like, oh, I can't leave without my friend. And then Helmeppo pulls up and he's like trying to arrest them. And then Kobe punches out Helmeppo. And he's like, all right, Luffy, I'm going to stay here. And Luffy's like, all right, you know, we're still friends, but bye. And in the original one, you know, that's whenever Luffy kept, you know, angsting Kobe on, you know, which led Kobe to eventually strike Luffy, you know, punch him in the face. And that has them, you know, get into this fight. And so that's whenever the Marines are like, oh, you know, you're not a pirate. Talking to Kobe, he's like, you're not a pirate. You're not with him. You know, because Kobe wanted to become a Marine. And the Marines saw that, you know, Kobe was with Luffy, you know, and, you know, was Zoro. And so they thought, you know, he was a Marine, as, not Marine, but a pirate as well. And so we, we just didn't get that whole interaction at all within the uh, live action. Uh, Kobe, you know, he punches out Helmeppo and he's like, I'm going to stay here. And Luffy's like, okay, bye. And. And then at the very end, we do see, uh, I mentioned earlier, we do see uh, Kabaji talking to uh, Buggy, and he's telling him that they had stole the map from Axe Morgan, and he's like, that's my map. It's rightfully mine. I'm going <coughs> to take it from them. Like I said, I, I've only seen the first episode so far. Um, I am interested to see how um, Buggy's powers are going to work, but you know that, that's going to be for the second episode. Uh probably do a review upon the second one and each you know episode from there on after but like I said um so I, I just want to go over some more things um in the very beginning of the episode we do have you know the introduction uh well fame power gold to roger chain attain this and everything else the world had to offer and we're seeing him you know up on that execution platform of Logtown. And this, this this is probably the thing that I dislike the most about the whole episode is Garp was standing up on execution platform, you know, yelling out to the crowd. He's like, we captured him, the so-called Pirate King, you know, and this is going to be a lesson. We're going to execute him in front of all you guys. And it's like, why was Garp up on the platform? Garp was not on the platform. That's the part that really, really, you know, just like, bothered me. I'm like, Garp wasn't on the platform with Execution of Goldie Roger. Yes, they were friends, but he wasn't up there. I don't know. It just something about that really, like I said, really just got to me. <clears throat> um, and Inaki Inna as, as Luffy, though. Like, he does, he does, he does a, a he does an okay job as Luffy. It's just, He's not my Luffy. And that's something I was telling my wife about. I was like, you know, this... It's, it's not it's not my Luffy. No, it's not the Luffy I, I, I read whenever I read the manga. It's not the Luffy I hear whenever, you know, I watch the... the anime and uh, she, she brought up a bad point. She's like, 
Well, the the two Luffy's, you know, the voice actors or actresses of the uh, of Luffy, both uh, English and Japanese, uh, sub and dub respectively, are 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 women <laughs> that do them. And so I guess it's just hearing this, uh, having this this actual like male voice, the Luffy. Uh, I don't know. It's he, like I said, he does a fine job, but it's just whenever I think of Luffy, you know. And as I look around, you know, I got these these Luffy figures, these Luffy statues, these uh, One Piece cards that have Luffy on him. You know, like that. I, I have a certain thought and image, and you know, uh, behind Luffy. And you know, it, like I said, Inaki's fine. Like he like probably the best looking uh, person they could get for a live action Luffy. Uh, I know Oda. Approved, he got the Oda Silva improvement. Um, but it's just he's he, he's not my Luffy. He might be this this new age Luffy, but he, he he's not my Luffy. <laughs> uh, that makes I do, I did like the the actor interactions. You know, like I, I felt like their chemistry was good uh, between Zoro and Luffy and Nami. You know, the way the actors you know were interacting with each other. You know, it felt genuine. Um, you know, and I was mentioning that, you know, Garp on the execution platform earlier. Um, but we did see some familiar faces within the crowd, such as Shanks and Mihawk, and I did I did like that, you know, that we were able to see them instead of, you know, later you have them, you know, talk about it, and then they have a flashback and showing them, you know, now in the flashback they were there, but now that we actually got to see the execution, we did see a bunch of characters uh, that were there. Uh, bounty posters on the wall at the Marine Base. Uh, I did see Avida, Bellamy, Foxy, Buggy. I thought that was really cool, you know, and that's, you know, foreshadowing these characters that we'll eventually get to see. And something else that was, I thought was pretty cool. Um, we, we saw it twice within the first episode. It was uh, characters that were interacting with their own bounty posters. Uh, we've seen it with both Alvida and Buggy. Like, their bounty poster will pull up on the screen. And then it'll show how much their bounty is, and then they'll, like, you know, like, swipe it out of the way, or they'll, like, hit it, and, you know, it moves out of frame. I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, uh, one thing I did mention earlier, <laughs> I haven't came back to yet. Um, Broke Works, which we know uh, is Crocodile's organization, it, it's, it was mentioned a decent amount within the first episode. Because uh, the bounty that... Zoro had captured uh, was a member of Broke Works. Uh, we do see Zoro's on this island. They call it Six's Island within the first episode. And he's lighting some candles and this Broke Works member comes to him. He's trying to scout Zoro, trying to get him to join uh, Broke Works. Hands him this card. And he's telling him, you know, once again, he's not interested. And, that, and that's when they fight and, you know, Zoro eventually uh, cuts him in half. We also had the end of the episode, we do see Garp again. We do see Garp ship, and uh, that's when the uh, members of the uh, Marine base they had called Garp and were telling them that a pirate with a straw hat had stole a map to the Grand Line, and he's talking to you know his right hand man's right there, and he's like, "Oh, we need to change course. We're going to the Marine base." And he's like, oh, you know, did we get some new information on Brokeworks? And he's like, no, we, no new leads on them. But that's where he informs them that a uh, pirate with a straw hat, you know, had uh, captured, not captured, but had uh, stolen a uh, map of the Grand Line. But yeah, like I said, it just mentions Brokeworks. Like I said, it, it may have happened another time, but I know definitely it mentioned that there's two times and it's interesting that you know it's being name dropped so early on because that is crocodiles organization once again and we're not going to see crocodile uh for a long time well realistically a long time uh within like the manga and the anime hell it might be episode three <laughs> at the pace we're going at now uh but these are my my initial thoughts you know the good the bad the I don't want to say the ugly, but these are my initial thoughts of the first episode of the One Piece live action. Have you watched it yet? Have you binged the whole series? Have you only seen the first episode? Did you start it? You couldn't get through it? Let me know down below. Um, like I, said, I do plan on watching through the entirety of what Netflix has. 
Uh, these are just my initial thoughts after the first episode. Once again, I am No with the Digi Bros. Uh, if you enjoyed this kind of review, this kind of podcasty uh, style of video where I'm discussing uh, my thoughts on the uh, live action of the One Piece, make sure to like the video, subscribe, um, share it with your friends. You know, let's let's talk about you know whether this is a good live action anime not saying an adaptation of one piece but just a good live action anime in general do you think this is going to put you know some faith in the uh, people you know moving forward hopefully to see some other anime series that are you know going to get that live action treatment maybe you know they could see that this is something that can be done moving forward let me know down below what are some you know anime that you would like to see get a live action adaptation of all right guys have a good one